Netflix. Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up and watch the movie. Pretend to understand and go home. It's just even, even. Okay, so they are uh, diving into the movie a bit. We start off with a very dark nightish um, opera kind of takeover, and we're you know introduced to. Um, to uh, the protagonist because he doesn't really have a name. It's like, okay, Fight Club, whatever you say. Uh, yeah. So Washington's character doesn't have a name and he's like this double agent kind of, or, you know, posing as, a, as an officer. And I think they're, they're trying to, you know, pull out some agent who's been supposedly his covers blown, right? There's, you know, the other the other team that's there has set up all of these bombs to kind of take out the opera house. And uh, the protagonist is, you know, is able to somehow in like a couple minutes find all of the bombs and get the, you know, get this uh, double. Yeah, that was pretty crazy (laughs) for him to just do that. That was like, okay, uh, you know. Sure. I mean, why not? <laughs> like I'll <laughs> go with it, you know? You know, it was just like, oh, all right. And then, it's anyway, a Nolan movie. You don't have to explain it. <gasps> just feel it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the double agent, um, he, he, he pretty much rescues him. And he also gets saved from an introverted bullet by some unknown person who we find out is Neil later. Uh, which is Robert Pattinson, who was there the whole time. Um, but yeah, so w- Washington, the protagonist character, you know, uh, saves the, the the double agent, gets out and thinks he's saved, um, you know, the people in the opera. And then uh, when when they jump into the truck, they basically say like you've you've saved the wrong person, and uh, they ambush him. And then uh, the protagonist and, you know, the guy who he's with is tortured by, I believe, who is it, the the Russians or something? Yeah, the yeah, they're Russian. Yeah, they're just, just fucking ripping out their teeth and trying to get them to talk uh, about, you know, who they work for. Give them any kind of names. And, uh, you know, the protagonist isn't, isn't down with it and... Uh, you know, there's the there's these little, I guess, these suicide capsules where if they are, yeah, they probably have like cyanide or something in them, yeah, uh, or supposedly, uh, if they become like a prison, kind of a you know, prisoner of war in that type of scenario, they are able to take that and you know, and that way nobody can torture them to to talk. So, uh, one of the Russian dudes finds finds that uh, the pill and you know, in the protagonist's sleeve throws it you know throws it out and he's like oh you're not getting off that easy and um and then the the guy who he's with um exposes a pill in his hand he's falling over on the ground so um the russians are distracted for a second and uh the protagonist you know takes that little um window of time to kind of jump forward and 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 take the pill and presumably he's he's supposedly killed himself and then we roll you know the tenant uh title and then um we find out that the cia had set that all up as a test to see if he would talk and then he's recruited as you know an agent all right i'll go i'll run with it i guess (laughs) Uh, (laughs) so yeah he's recruited as an agent and then um First off, if that was me, I I would be so pissed off. And when he, when uh, the guy who's explaining to him, like you know, it was a test. You know, some people say they can jump, run into a, a burning a building until they until they feel feel the heat. And he explained the whole thing of why they did it. You know, I would have been extremely pissed off. Um, that's just me. But you know, he, he's kind of his character's kind of just like okay, like okay. Well, so you know, what's this for? What are you like? Basically, he I think he feels like he's being recruited. Uh huh. For the most part. Um. But yeah, <clears throat> and then he starts going over. Uh, he kind of goes over uh, what they kind of need him for, uh, and it gave him basically they give him one name or a, a name, which is a tenant. 
which is basically and supposedly an organization where if he says that word, it can open all these doors or close certain doors, whatever bullshit metaphor, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, and then he's like, all right. <clears throat> and then that moves us into, you know, them pretty much telling us what kind of movie this is going to be where, you know, uh, there's this thing called intro, in, inverted entropy where people in the future are sending item, certain items back uh, and they're basically f- traveling back in time. Um, and so we're, somehow, you know, us in the present time are able to manipulate this stuff. And so he runs into this scientist who is just like, says the same thing as i've heard in real life where um you know she's like yeah look at these bullets they're they're introverted um don't try to you know understand it but just feel it or whatever and then you know he starts to kind of try to wrap his mind around this you know what's going on and they do this thing where he um he holds up a gun and the bullet has already been, you know, struck into the wall and it kind of flies back into his gun. And he does this, uh, uh, to me, it was like a Matrix uh, callback where he's just like, whoa, <laughs> the protagonist, which is fu- it's funny that he says that, like, he's so surprised when he's just said that he understood <laughs> how yeah. introversion works. But then he's still like, whoa, what? <laughs> Why does it? And she's like, what? She's like the bullets aren't going out of them; they're coming back into the gun. Yeah, you're, so you're, you're catching them. Essentially, you're catching the bullets. And <laughs> I'm like, "What the hell is going on? I don't understand." All right, let's keep going. Let's <laughs> go through the movie. Let's, let's put. Let's, I'm listening. You got me, so I'm listening. Uh, that was probably me. That, that was probably me. The 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 next like thirty to forty minutes, like. <laughs> What the hell are they saying? Um, <laughs> so yeah, but I uh, yeah, I mean, up until that point, I'm like, okay, this is movie. This movie is like batshit crazy. Like this is insane. Yep. And they're playing it so um, straight. They're just like, yeah, this is totally fine. Like, don't, don't question it. Just keep going. Yeah, and they're like, and he's like, oh, she's like, we're up against, like, you know, uh, something that's going to destroy the world, basically. And he's like, oh, a nuclear holocaust? She, she's like, no. Um, well, what did she say? Um, like a temporal paradox or something. Something like along those lines, like a temporal manipulation or something. And, and it was just like, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, again, let's keep rolling. All right, so then he's like, okay, and then um, the then we int- were introduced to the character of of uh, Neil, who is played by Robert Pattinson, who knows he's basically a CIA contact, and he knows um, like way too much about the protagonist already. They sit down, and he just you know you know he he makes uh, callbacks to what he likes to drink and all this kind of stuff where you know that he knows more than he is letting on and he's just sitting back and kind of playing dumb. So, um, the scientist from earlier is like, well, or no, the protagonist says, well, um, do you know what, like the, where the metals originated from for the bullets because then maybe I can like do some tracing and find out where they originate from and so him and uh, Neil figure out that the um, the bullets originated from uh, Mumbai so they they go and do this kind of sneak attack thing which is a really cool um, kind of SPS that was such an awesome like wall crawling very you know, blind thing. That yeah. was it was so awesome. Very esp esp like spy espionage like Tom Cruise type shit going on. Yes, um, and it's so it's very very well done. But um, yeah, they go up and they you know they they fuck up all the bodyguards and they get to the dude and per, the protagonist has words with them and he's like yo, um, 
you know, I know that they came from you. Um, like, tell me, or I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put one in your dome, essentially. And he's like, no, actually, it's my. Basically, he's like, I, it doesn't go through me. It's actually my, you know, my wife, I believe, who is uh, her name is Priya. Yeah. Um, and she basically. Um, uh, tells him that she's also a member of the tenet, and the uh, the actual cartridges were purchased from um, this Russian, you know, powerhouse dude named Sater, on on Andre Sater, I believe. And so the cops start coming, and and they bail. Uh, even though it's funny because he has like this like laid back conversation with her. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's, like, so cool and, like, casual. And then she's like, well, I thought you would have, like, a plan of escape. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, not one that I'm a fan of or whatever. And then they just jump off the thing like it's nothing. And That was pretty badass, too. I was like, oh, like, super, like, Batman-ish. Yes, yes. So then I think that's when Seder starts to realize, uh, or no, not Seder, uh, the protagonist... Um, is looking for an in uh, a, a way to get close to 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 Seder, you know, and so he he kind of um, he wants to go through the prince cat, right? Yeah, his which is Seder's uh, wife. Yeah, and um, he's like he figures out. I th- I think it might be uh, through the, the Michael Caine scene that. Um, the cat has, uh, she. Tr- I think they tried to sell like a Goya, uh, a very expensive piece of uh, or painting, uh, from and from this guy named Arepo, which is an opera uh, backwards, which is crazy. But <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, yeah. But um, but. Basically, they figure out that the 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 Goya painting was a fake, and that um, I guess Seder had purchased uh, had purchased this um, painting from her as a way to to keep her in his control uh, because it was uh, a fake painting, right? Yeah. And so, so and that's where this kind of um, subplot problem comes in where Kate's, uh, you know, is forced to not see her son, um, or at least only see her on the terms of, of Seder. And, and he's kind of, yeah, keep- he's kind of like in control of the whole, of, of her whole situation with her son. Yeah. Where he's like, yo, since you sold me this fraudulent thing, if you try to leave me or you do anything, I'm going to put you basically in prison. Um, and so, uh, I think that moves us into where um, Neil and the protagonist kind of hatch this crazy batshit plot to to crash um, this big ass freight plane into uh, into where the the painting is supposedly kept, so they can kind of. Right steal it and 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 you know go unnoticed because they have all these gold plates and that every you know everybody's going to be paying attention to the the cargo that's fallen on the ground and not really pay attention to the crash and when that they whole, that whole scene was uh so crazy it is um, just and the way it the way you, when you watch if, you know when you're watching it like a movie from you know um front of the movie to the end of the movie it, or beginning to end, sorry. You, you kind of have, at least for me, the whole scene where they, you know he run uh, David Washington or the protagonist runs into this guy who's all suited up, and they start fighting. Um, he already understands what's about to happen. Well, before they start fighting, because they walk into that room where there's you know bullet holes throughout the whole uh, throughout the window, and. Um, it's funny because uh, Neil's like, you know, what happened here? And, and uh, he's like, it hasn't happened yet. Which, uh, you know, that sounds 
like you're crazy when you say something like that. Yeah. But, uh, he, you know, he, he's already kind of got the idea.